Welcome, everyone. It's wonderful to be here with you. Welcome to this climate change communication course entirely online. It is uh, going to be a phenomenal experiment <laughs> in trying something new. I've never done this before. I usually teach climate change communication in person. So this is requiring lots of adjustments and new ideas. And I'm sure not everything is going to go perfectly well. I hope you'll forgive me. And I hope you will actually help me make this work well. I'm going to talk a lot about this here in this introductory unit um, to, you know, to make this happen. Um, I'll, I'll give you one example of what I'm just wondering about. As I'm recording this outside, it's pouring rain. I'm wondering if, you know, I can hear it um, myself, but I wonder, can you hear it? And is it bothering you or is it OK? So. <laughs> These are the kinds of things that we will try to make work somehow. Um, but in any case, thank you for joining us um, for this class. I'm delighted we have so many of you join us. Um, there's more than 50 people signed up, and it's just delightful. And I'm very, very sorry that I can't meet you in person. It would have been really wonderful. But we will meet each other virtually online, and I hope that will make up for, for that. <laughs> Let me introduce myself and my partner in this endeavor, Michelle Martin. Many of you know her. Uh, she is a familiar face. She has worked and lived in Seychelles for a long time, so I don't need to spend a lot of time. But there are some of you who actually may not know her. So I want to uh, introduce her just briefly. Uh, Michelle Martin holds a PhD in environmental science from uh, New York University in Canada specializing in education for sustainability. She has over 30 years experience as an environmental educator with the last 10 of those focused more specifically on climate change, stakeholder engagement, education and capacity building. She has worked with a wide variety of stakeholder groups, including professionals like yourselves from diverse sectors, including farming, fisheries, construction, planning, teachers, the media, community groups, and so on and so forth. Um, she has also extensive experience of actually working as a freelance climate change consultant and has in this capacity contributed to several national plans and strategies in Seychelles for climate change, energy, and sustainable development. She's currently, like we all are based somewhere else, she's currently based in Canada, working as a freelance consultant leading sustainability and climate change education programs for students, teachers, and other groups, both there and, of course, now re working remotely um, still in Seychelles. As for myself, well, what can I tell you? Um, I like to describe my work as falling sort of into three buckets. The first one, quite relevant to this, is I've worked for 15 to 20 years now on how to communicate climate change, all aspects, science, adaptation, mitigation, and increasingly the transformative changes that um, we will very likely face. Um, another bucket uh, is my work on adaptation to climate change. I'm mostly focused on coastal areas. But I've also worked with engineers on infrastructure issues. I've worked on public health issues. Um, and I've worked in conservation context. So um, quite a diversity of experiences there. And the last bucket is my interest in how to make the interaction between science and policy, science and practice, more effective. And those three things very often come together in one spot. And of course, you know, here in this class, while it's mostly focused on climate change communication, I can, of course, you know, try to draw on my adaptation experience and uh, the science practice interface uh, experience. And please feel free to ask, ask both Michelle, Michelle and myself about any of those areas. It's a really amazing reservoir that we bring of expertise that we bring to you. And um, I hope you really will draw on it. Um, an opportunity to introduce yourself to other people in this class as well. Um, but before we get there, I actually want to give you a little bit of a summary overview, and that's based on your pre-training surveys. And the first thing I want to say is that most of you are women. <laughs> so often in the sustainability and climate change work, women are the lead people involved in this. And it's just 
I just want to thank you for for that and for this wonderful opportunities for women to lead crucial, crucial work in our society. And of course, all you men are very, very welcome here. I just simply like to point that out. Um, it's one of the very few fields where um, women actually are dominant. Um, so thank you, all of you, for the work that you do. And as you see here on the right, most of you, half of you, come from government positions. But we have a great mix of people in the room, if you will. Um, a quarter of you almost um, work in civil society in one way or another. Um, some of you are in the private sector, in academia, in media. So it's just such a, a richness that we have with each other. There's some 50 or more people who have signed up. And so I just want to encourage you throughout this entire course to really draw on the expertise of the people in the course as much as the one that, you know, that Michelle and I bring to this. A couple more things. I asked you about how familiar you are with climate change. Um, and as you see here, there are a good number, probably half of you who said you're either extremely or very familiar with climate change science, impacts and response options. And the other half of you are not so much. It's really interesting. In fact, those of you who said so um, thought this is a good class to learn about climate change per se. And yes, you will get some of that, but that's not the main focus. I wanna really be clear that this particular course is about the, if you will, social science of communication. It is about how do we talk about all this stuff, the science impacts and, and responses, how do we talk about that effectively to mobilize people to action? So you will get resources and um, I'll talk about them uh, briefly later, um, even in this unit, um, to make sure that we all have a basic understanding of climate change, but the principal focus is on how to effectively communicate. The other pe uh, piece I ask you about is, um, you know, what are your opportunities to talk about this? Um, and interestingly enough, uh, some of you focus more on communicating the science, some of you are much more engaged on the mitigation side, the majority of you are really working on impacts and adaptation. How do we prepare for what's coming and, and um, bring that to both government policy, um, to different sectors of society, and to the households um, that all have to do some preparation. Some of you are more broadly involved in issues around sustainability, of which, of course, climate change is a part. Um, some of you specifically mentioned that you're interested in, and focused on risk communication, trying to build resilience, and with some of you, I couldn't quite tell. <laughs> it wasn't so clear. But again, a, a wide spectrum of opportunities here and, and things that we can learn from each other um, and have experience. To As for your key audiences, that too was really interesting. Pretty much anybody, everything that you can imagine, who we could possibly reach with climate change communication is already being addressed through the work that you all do. That ranges by majority from the general public. And I wanna say we will spend a lot of time on what do we actually mean by general public, all the way to speaking with students and trying to mobilize and engage youth. Um, many of you mentioned professionals, you know, whether they're in resource management or tourism or in agriculture or utilities or health, the health sector. Some of you mentioned policymakers and elected officials, and for some of you, it's basically your colleagues, the people you know who sit in the office who are not elected, but who have chosen to work in public office um, and try to do you know good work from there. How do you reach them? Many many of them have not been trained per se in climate change, right? But they might now have to change their work because of climate change. So how do we do that? Um, Several of you mentioned teachers, patients. I mean, it's just, it, it's such a wonderful um, palette of, of opportunities. And we will spend a good deal of time, particularly in unit two, about defining and really getting to know the audience that we're trying to reach. Another thing I ask you about is what your experience is to date uh, and what opportunities you have to talk about it. And again, it's such a, I mean, every single medium and channel and opportunity is essentially already here with us in the room. The majority of you said it's mostly through one-on-one -on -one conversations. 
which is probably one of your best bets, <laughs> one of your, your most effective avenues, and yet also a very challenging one, right? Because you actually have to really stand in the heat of that conversation. <laughs> um, several of you mentioned that you're working more through you know, expos or exhibits and festivals or writing in very short form um, brochures and websites and newsletters, um, even social media, blog posts. Um, some of you do what I do right now, <laughs> provide trainings and workshops or outreach um, opportunities for others. So you know exactly what I'm talking about right now and trying to do this with no audience <laughs> in front of me. So anyway, there's there's really a, a wonderful set of opportunities. And, you know, we're going to go and and practice and, and learn about sort of the basics of communication. And I'm not um, focusing on any one of these specifically, but you are free to really focus on whatever makes most sense for you. So if you want to learn how to do this better in, you know, writing brochures or policy documents, you know, go for it. That's that's the, your medium, your channel, and, and you can do that. If you are here and you have opportunities for journalistic reporting, go for it. Um, and, you know, we will help each other make those things as effective as possible. Um, but there's not going to be an in-depth dive on any one of these. Um, but we'll definitely spend a good deal of time thinking about, you know, what will carry your message to whoever you are. And then the other thing that I ask you about is what you really want to learn about. And that fell into a whole category, a whole set of um, different challenges that you face. And you see them here. And because it's small script and because it's you know a lot on the page, I just want to quickly pause to say the beauty of this particular training <laughs> is you can just push the pause button and simply you know, review it, look again at what was said before, stop it, read it carefully, what's on the page, and I invite you to do that at any one point. But this is a long list. I re realize that the top leading issues that you all have is, you know, how do you communicate in a way that actually leads to action? And the second is, what am I going to tell these people? <laughs> After that, a lot of questions about the how and through what channels and, you know, and so on and so forth. What I did in order to you know, make this more accessible is I used all your ideas and put them into a bunch of categories. And the color coding of these bars in this uh, histogram here, same colors as here. So let me explain what I basically did. I took all those questions that related to how, the how of communication, and put them into one category, what to say, about the messages and the content is another category. You know, what goals you want to achieve and how how do you get there? Um, that is one category. Uh, with whom? Several of you had questions of, you know, how do I do this specifically for youth or for tourists or for people in the health sector, or whatever. So we're going to spend actually a lot of time on that question of the audience, maybe more than you have indicated. And the reason for that is that if you know your audience well, you can tailor your communication that is really speaking to them. And your chances of being successful are so much better than if you just, in a very, very general way, try to reach anybody, everybody with one thing, right? So we're going to be very specific about the audience and how to, you know, what do we, what does this audience need from you? And then respond to that need. We're also going to spend some time on this question of what are the communication channels and which ones work best for which audience. Um, and we're going to spend some time on the question of how do we know it's working? <laughs> I think there was only one of you who asked that question, and I want to thank you in particular, because that is just such a rare thing. You know, we all want to know and we all want to achieve a goal. But when it comes to communication, very often people do not evaluate whether it's working. They do not test ahead of time. They simply run their communication campaign and they never look back if anything worked, except that they you know, then end up complaining that it didn't work. <laughs> well, you know, can we think together about how would we know good change is happening? 
are we achieving what we actually intended or did we have a maybe unintended consequence that we didn't even foresee? So we're gonna spend some time in the last unit on that question too. So um, this is how it translated um, in terms of what your major concern and is actually reflective of the course goals that we've come up with. The first one is that at the end of this training, I want you to have a clear understanding of what the basic components are of impactful climate change communication. And what I mean by impactful is that you actually achieve with that communication what you wanted to achieve. Simple as that. The second goal is that I want you at the end of this to know how to identify key audiences and really understand your audience and then develop and practice audience specific communication techniques as opposed to some generic something, <laughs> right? There are all generic principles, but I want you to apply it to the particular audiences that you care about, that you want to reach it. And of course, you know, we're all going to choose different audiences so we can learn from each other. Like how did they over there um, reach the business people? How did they reach, you know, um, whatever, the health workers? So we can learn how the general principles look in specific instances. The third goal is that I want you actually to focus um, on what is it that you want to say? What are those key messages? And then practice applying them and delivering them to that specific audience, right? And it has everything to do with who that audience is, what you want to achieve and what they need to know. So we're going to come back to that question in unit two. And the last um, course goal that we have is that I want you to understand the importance and role and practice working with emotions, values, and identity in climate change communication. And you might wonder, well, where is the understanding of the climate science? <laughs> Very good question, and we'll spend a good deal of time on that. Um, what I can tell you right here is that probably 90% of the reasons of why you don't see the changes you want to see is not because people don't understand and don't have a PhD in climate science. <laughs> That's not the issue. The issue that is that you haven't connected to or addressed their emotions and their values and who they want to be in the world with your communication. And so I want you to really build that in. And some of you who are, you know, very technical in your, your professions, you might like freak out right now that, oh my God, I can't do emotions. I can't do values and identity. Well, there is ways for you to do that without losing your credibility. We're going to focus on that in our practice, in our homework, in our uh, time together. Throughout each one of these goals, we will address those six components of how to communicate, what to communicate, with whom, all of that stuff that I just mentioned. They don't match one-on-one -on -one with the course goals there. Each one of these six components that you're interested in is really present in each one of those goals. Now, there's a way in which this directly translates to the, the training and how we designed it. As you can see here, the first one um, is that is what we're doing today. It's the introduction to it, a general overview, and getting a common understanding of what climate change is all about. Um, Daniel Etongo, who is part of this training, who is participating because he wants to learn how to improve his communication, he has actually volunteered to provide us three wonderful lectures on the basics of climate change science, the impacts and response options, um, and you know what's happening already in Seychelles. Some of you ask for that specifically. Some of you know this really well. And I want to say to both of you groups um, that if you are already extremely or very familiar with climate change, you might be tempted to just skip right over that and say, yeah, I've got more important things to do. And yes, I know we are all busy, <laughs> but I want you to listen to those and to listen to that, not so much for the content, but for the how. How does Daniel convey this information? How can he do this better? Because, uh, and you know, Daniel will forgive me for saying so, he in fact gave me the permission to say so. He asked in his pre-training survey, how can I do this better? 
he wants the feedback. So we're going to actually have opportunities to talk with him and with each other about what's working and what could be done differently um, in conveying these basics of climate change. So all of you, I want you to, to look at that both for content and for the how and what we can learn from that. It's, it's a, such a rich resource and I really want to thank Daniel for, for giving us this opportunity um, to both learn and learn from him and, and with each other about the communication. There's of course my training video here, um, the first part of this and then a second part that focuses on the basics of strategic climate change communication. There's homework um, and there are resources and those, all those uh, materials for the homework um, and those additional supplementary materials is online in a Google folder that we sent to you by email. Um, and we will point you to what is needed at any one point. Okay, so um, there is a unit one and it has the exercises, the resources, the um, uh, slides that you can look at, um, print out and take notes, scribble notes on, whatever you, you, know, you want. So it's all there. Um, the week of April 20th, we will actually do several things. One is we will have that first Zoom meeting and have a live discussion where we debrief essentially what happened for you in, in unit one and hear you know, on your experiences and your insights and your uh, challenges. Um, but we also will provide the next set of training uh, slides from myself and we have a special appearance. <laughs> from a journalist who will um, give us a perspective from, you know, from that side. What is the challenge of communicating climate change and how do we make that happen? And again, there will be homework and, and special resources. And, and this is how it goes every time. On, in unit three, we will focus particularly on identifying, um, sorry, on, on audience specific motivations and barriers like you know, what, what makes people tick and what gets in the way of acting on anything you might say. And one thing that often gets in the way is people's emotions. Um, so we will deal quite a bit um, with the psychological and emotional responses people have and their defenses and how we work with those. Again, with practices um, and with online readings and, and videos to, to give you a sense of it. And of course, that particular week, um, we will have a, a live discussion um, on you know, the previous unit that was all about uh, audiences and messages and goals of communication. Also, one thing in unit three, we will have actually a special appearance of Patrick Victor, and we will hear him sing and be interviewed um, and you know have that feed into our um, our thinking about how to use the more than just cognitive side of our brains <laughs> to connect with audiences. On May 4th, our fourth unit, we will think a lot about um, messengers and about the channels of communication. There, obviously, all of this is um, interrelated, and you know, I, I say it here with um, we will revisit the goals of communication as you'll notice and, and see again and again, I sort of paint a fairly linear picture here, but really developing an effective communication strategy is iterative. You constantly look back to who am I talking to? What am I going to say? How am I going to say it best? Who you know is the best person to say it? So all of this is an iterative process and we will do that through our exercises and uh, exploration of, of different resources. And again, on that particular day, um, we will have a live discussion about the previous unit. So always a slight delay, but you need time to actually, you know, do it, right? To actually dive into the material. Um, the fifth unit, um, again, we will have um, an artist come and, uh, you know, present, perform for us, which I'm just so delighted about this opportunity to, to bring that in in this way. Um, we will have my training videos and um, think about this question of how do we know that we're making the difference we really want to make with homework and exercises and um, additional resources online. And of course that day a discussion on unit four. And then there's a final um, session for closure 
on May 18th, um, in which we discuss what happened in the previous um, unit. Um, and I'm going to ask you to evaluate this training because, you know, maybe this is the way of the future and we need to figure out how to make this work. So um, that's what we're going to do together. I'm really excited about it. And I hope that you will actually get the, the needs met um, that in your surveys. Let me just say one thing before we get um, into it. And that is, it's, it's a, an American saying, I don't know if you have that too, if you get lemons, make lemonade out of it. Well, <laughs> here are lemons. One of them is that I'm not there. I'm not with you and we can't do this in person. I'm gonna come back in a moment to how we're gonna make this work and why we've chosen all these different um, resources for you. Um, but there's another lemon, if you will, and that is I've never worked in Seychelles. I don't need to hide that. Um, this is uh, one big reason why Michelle is so essential to this training. She knows your context so much better than I do. Um, and she's helping me adjust um, in many important ways. But I'm going to ask you to every single moment, help me figure out, does this apply? If not, you know, that's how it is. It just speaks to that importance of the cultural context, the identities and values and the way we are in different places. And that's just that's just the fact of life. That's the heart of communica effective communication. And so at any point in this, I want you to say, well, that's an interesting example from some other place in the world, but that's not how it works here. And then I want you to tell me how it works there. So we can make that happen. And there's one other reason of why that's important. When I look across the literature, the social science literature on communication, there's very, very little available for what is true and happening in your context. Um, again, we're going to make lemonade out of this by you being the experts, you being the, the you know, the, the way we, in which we can establish from all your many different perspectives how things are in Seychelles. That's 50 voices that we can, you know, apply to this, and we're going to get quite far with that. So let me say a word about how we're going to make this happen virtually. Because we can't do in-person lectures and instructions is why you have this video recording right here. <laughs> and any other online videos, resources um, that you can explore at your leisure. And because you know, we can't have people come into our training in person. We're going to have their performances and lectures and interviews, again, recorded and for you to look at whenever you can. It's going to be hard for you to simply, you know, ask me questions right there <laughs> in person. So I'm going to ask you to email or message Michelle in particular if she will gather it, but you can also contact me with any questions or confusions or concerns that you have. And I'm gonna ask you to do that on the, you know, send me those by the weekend prior to our Zoom meeting every week. Why? Because let's say I get 20 requests and four of them sound pretty similar. Then I can group them and I can make sure that we address them ahead of time. Of course, you can ask questions also in, in the session, but you know, if you wanna make sure that it gets addressed then send me, send Michelle those questions and concerns ahead of time. Um, we would in person would have done a whole bunch of reflective solar exercises. And because we can't do that right now, I'm gonna ask you to maybe keep a journal or simply keep notes, or if you prefer to, you know, self record on a, on a handheld device, please do. Um, Simply speak, um, take notes on what your experience is, how you think about it, and you get a lot of prompts <laughs> from me to do that. We, there will be pair exercises, um, and that we can do virtually. Um, but I'm going to ask you to do this by phone or Skype or WhatsApp or whatever works for you. Um, if you are not comfortable with that and you feel like you need to meet in person, I only want you to do that if you can do that maintaining all or adhering to all the guidelines locally um, for social distancing, or I should rather say physical distancing while being socially connected. <laughs> so I really, really want to underline this. I am not going to be responsible for any of you getting sick with this awful virus. Um, so please take care. Use these other means we have of communication 
and all of the exercises will be possible um, to do over the phone or whatever you know preferred device you use. And then the last thing is that, you know, we would be doing interactive group exercises, which, of course, is more challenging to do. But um, we will use, you know, any combination, again, of um, exercises done alone or in pairs um, to, to do them. And again, social distancing must just be the top priority at this moment. So use your journal, take notes, and then we have these Zoom meetings. Come join the Zoom meetings, ask questions. We will record them so they're available also for you later. Um, but I simply want to encourage you to use these opportunities um, so that we make the best of it. One more bit of orientation. Um, this is just for you to keep in the back of your mind. Um, we have two places, basically, where we put all the course materials. Any lectures from me, any interviews from others will be on a YouTube channel. And right now, each one of these YouTube videos is private. Um, and we will send you the links so only you can access them. Eventually, we will make these, um, these videos and lectures available so that the materials are there for others later to, to use. But for now, it, it's going to be you know, a private link and and that's how you access them. The rest of the material is all in one Google folder and you see at the bottom of this page the link to it. We will write that link into every email we send you when new materials are there. Um, it's pretty self-explanatory what you can find there about Michelle and myself, the agenda, the participants, and then each of the units. And within each of these units are the training slides. Um, you can print them out and scribble on them, take notes, um, or review them simply again. Um, there's exercise materials with everything you need in it, and then these supplementary materials, sometimes a PDF, sometimes just a list of links. So whatever it is, you all will find that. And I'm using these symbols, the YouTube symbol and this folder symbol um, on different slides so that you can see where they, you know, when it, it sort of signals to you when to go to a different place um, and, and to look at that. And again, the beauty of this recording is just press the pause button and you can uh, get all that information. I know you're all busy. I know you all have to juggle lives and children and jobs right at the moment. So the most important pieces for this training, if you don't, can, if you can't do everything, then I would say focus on the lectures and focus on the exercise materials and do those. Um, so it's just a reality and, you know, the rest of it will be there for you. You can look at that at some point if it's possible. So one of the things at the end of this particular unit that I want you to do is you go to the Google folder and you look for unit one, exercise one, and this is what the first piece of that is. <laughs> you are going to contact your training partner. Um, there is a list in there with whom you have been paired or you chose to pair with. Um, typically it's one other person, but sometimes it's a couple and that's just how it is. It's totally fine. And I want you to figure out, you know, how are you going to talk to these people, call them up or WhatsApp them or whatever it is. And I want you to answer two questions. If they don't already know your name, of course, introduce yourself and who you're with, but then say one skill or trait that you bring to climate change communication that is actually really helpful. Brag. <laughs> I want you to simply say what you bring to this that's already a strength and uh, already a, a skill that others can draw on. Um, maybe you surprise yourself in what you answer. And the second thing I want you to say is, what is one thing you wish the people that you want to communicate with actually knew about climate change or do about climate change, whatever it is? What is really one thing you want to say to them? It's one way to get at a message, right? <laughs> anyway, so that's that's your the first part of exercise one. While you're at it, I want you to do one other exercise, and that is, in that same Google folder for unit one and exercise one, um, where you find that list of who you're partnered with, you also find instructions for how to do this particular scenario exercise. And you find in that list 
um, of you know who you partnered with, what scenario you should focus on. There are six different scenarios and you don't have to do more than one. You're just assigned to one. If you want to do two, God bless you. It's all wonderful. Um, but you don't have to do more. Um, just virtually connect with your training partner. Acquaint yourself with the scenario that you've been given. Um, and then discuss and together develop a communication strategy that is appropriate and effective for this particular audience and situation. And I want you to write that down, like, you know, in your journals or on a note page, so that when we get together in our virtual Zoom meeting, you can report on that and, and are just reminded of, you know, what is it that you came up with. The exercise instructions give you much more specific details of, you know, what kinds of things to consider and how to address it. But I want you to spend, you know, some half an hour, whatever it will take you um, to have this conversation with your exercise partner, training partner. All right, this is the end of part one and do that. And then when you're ready, come to part two.